he orchestrates this scene at once threatening and, and beautiful. And it's just such a magnificent representation of, of nature on these, these islands that make up this country of Japan. Fine arts illuminate our present and explicate our past. SCAD professors teach brilliant young creators every day. And in this series, we reveal the works that most inspire our experts. This is SCAD Class. Today we uncovered the origins of one of the most frequently reproduced artworks of all time, Under the Wave off Kanagawa, or as it's sometimes known, the Great Wave. Joining me on this adventure to the Far East is SCAD professor of art history, Cindy Lissica. Cindy, what appeals to you about this majestic image? Well, this is one of my favorite and perhaps one of the world's favorite artworks coming from Japan. It's iconic. This print is from a series by Hokusai in 1830. It's known as The Great Wave. Mm -hmm. um, the title translates more to Under the Wave off Kanagawa. The Edo period in Japan was around the beginning of the 17th century through the 19th century. At this time, it was in a period of isolation from the rest of the world but it was also in a period that was very peaceful and prosperous. So people were really enjoying a focus on arts and leisure. Most of the woodblock printmakers were designing scenes that were about the life in the Edo period. It's actually called ukiyo-e, and it translates to pictures of the floating world. And this, floating world. Yes, That's so floating poetic. World. Love it. And uh, the floating world was this time where people were uh, enjoying leisure in life, as I mentioned. Perhaps this idea of this lightness as well. People floating through the world, even. This idea of possibilities, too, comes out in this idea of the, the floating world. And almost peace. magical. Peace. Yes, and peaceful. Peace and prosperity. Hokusai actually started from humble beginnings. Yes, so he was born into the lower classes. At that time, uh, there was a, a strict structure of, of society from the very wealthy uh, government leadership and uh, aristocrats down to the sort of lower classes. It was the merchants and artisans were considered to be of lower class uh, society, but they were the producers of, of these artworks. Mm. His father decorated mirrors for the shogun? Oh, yes. And... You know, there are all these wonderful stories about uh, Hokusai uh, being very, you know, eccentric and, and in his, uh, in the ways that he would present his artwork. Uh, in fact, there's a story at a festival that he was, he entered a kind of art contest in front of the shoguns and uh, he rolled out a long piece of paper and he painted a long, wide blue of striped down the center. And then he grabbed the chicken, dipped its feet into some red paint, chased it across the paper, and then uh, said it was autumn leaves along the river and he won the contest. <laughs> <laughs> the era was quite peaceful. And so people were enjoying activities and um, in the city and uh, social events. And many of the subjects of woodblock prints were actors and lovers and Hokusai decided to make the main character Mount Fuji. Hokusai is capturing nature in a way that was really innovative. Focus on the changing seasons and all of the energy actually that we can witness in nature. And so man becomes a little bit smaller of a focus in it. First, he did 36 views of Mount 36. Fuji, mm -hmm. and each print in the series, Hokusai chose a location from which to view Mount Fuji. 
So we get to see also Mount Fuji as this ever-present, but also a character that has personality. Uh, Always there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so it implies this interaction that we have with the environment around us, and then also this steadfastness of, you know, we know Mount Fuji is near. It was maybe a little bit of a risk for him to uh, to do something like this just because these subjects weren't really what people were asking for. How was it received at the time that Hokusai created it? It was pretty well received. It was produced over 1830 to about 1832. Mm -hmm. And it was so popular and well-liked um, that he created an additional 10 prints in the series. So now, actually, the entire series is uh, 46. And this is part of that series from 1830. And this print is possibly the most famous Japanese artwork. What makes the Great Wave so iconic, in your opinion? It's, it's got to be the wave, that beautiful, uh, tumultuous, powerful wave framing Mount Fuji, which, of course, is the star of the whole series very aptly placed there, but you almost see a replica of it in the wave, too. Yes, you have that peak mm -hmm. um, below, or sort, sort of in the foreground, mm -hmm. and we also have in the foreground, we realize, oh, there, there are men in boats here. People. Right in the middle of this kind of rogue wave that takes up a large part of the composition. So something really special about Hokusai, the way that he carefully orchestrates the whole scene and so that you can look around the image and see uh, different things happening. We're used to thinking of Mount Fuji as this huge, yes. as towering, majestic, ever-present uh, icon in Japan. And here we have it just kind of framed by this big, curling, energetic wave. So Fuji just has this beautiful little triangle that we're so familiar with in the background. A main character, but still in the in the background but we don't we don't lose it we still have that that focus here and the colors subtle colors but then that vibrant prussian blue yes and that prussian blue was so special at that time as well uh, it was not easy to get so it was imported and hokusai became known for for using it he was using indigo before, and he has used both indigo and Prussian blue in this series. And so we see the gradations of, of color throughout the wave uh, by using that, from all the way from almost black to the really light, subtle uh, shadows of, of the crest of the wave. Well, he was an accomplished painter, and I think you see that expertise in this woodcut. Yes, absolutely. There are these moments that happen, these uh, kind of speckles and splashes, and. He really was an excellent painter. He gets so much more attention for the woodblock prints, especially because of series like the 36 Views of Mount Fuji. But he actually apprenticed as a young man with a, an engraver, and he learned engraving. So he was very talented in that he could, not only was he a designer and painter of the images, but he could actually do the engravings too. Because most woodblock prints required four people to to create it, from the designer, to the engraver, to the printer, and then to the publisher. This is a detail of not only the, the crest of the wave, but also we can see on the upper left there, his signature. Yeah. His given name and his family name is actually Katsushika Hokusai, so Katsushika is his family name. And Hokusai is actually his given name, I so it would be like the first name, but it's inverted in Japanese. This one is actually one of, I would say, dozens of versions of his name that he would change throughout his life depending on, I guess, how he felt <laughs> at the moment. It's kind of a way to trace his life and different moments in his, in his life uh, to recognize throughout the print. Even within this series, there are different signatures. His work as a painter was very important to him. In fact, some of his signatures refer to his wanting to be a better painter. This one actually also, he's incorporated this idea of the, the brush of Hokusai. And then in the uh, rectangle there outline, that's actually the title of the series and this particular image from it. Beautiful. He had a lot of fans in France too, didn't he? 
He did later on at the time that these were being made. It was just a few decades before Japanese woodblock prints blew up in Europe. They were super popular later in the 19th century. In 1868, it moves to the Meiji era where uh, there's a lot of import and export between East and West, and particularly the woodblock prints are being sent over to Europe. These were so uh, abundant at the time that sometimes woodblock prints and you know newspapers and those kinds of things would be used to wrap the, the more precious luxury objects like the porcelains. Mm. But then the Europeans, especially the French, they really uh, loved the images. So they had quite an impact on artists like Vincent van Gogh, for example. He would actually trade some paintings for woodblock prints. He knew a, a dealer in, in Paris that had Japanese woodblock prints. So whenever you see portraits, self-portraits of Van Gogh in his house, sometimes you'll see in the background something hanging on the wall and it's a, it's a Japanese woodblock print. Also composers were... Yeah, Debussy. Yes, Debussy's La Mer, the sea, exactly, uh, was a, really about this, about the great wave, specifically this piece, not just the whole series, but this particular piece. So it has maintained popularity for quite a long time, actually. So what do your students say when you present them with this image? Well, students are certainly familiar with it. Uh, it's usually, it's something that people just light up when they when they see this image. It's, it's well loved and, uh, and familiar, but not everyone is necessarily aware of the whole, the story behind it and the man behind, the artist behind uh, this work. When he made this series, he was actually already in his 70s, but he felt that he was just getting started. That he, and he wanted to live to be, you know, over 100 so that he could finally be a, a good painter. So he was always working on improving. But this was a really magical moment for him. Uh, it was a, kind of a turning point in his life where he, but by focusing on nature and the landscapes that he changed the the landscape of art, really. He really did. Exquisite. For all of you watching, keep the conversation going in the comments, and I'll see you next time.